The Seal NATO. Not a ridiculous concept for a film, but rather a ridiculous concept for a boss and don't starve shipwrecked. He is one of my personal favorites across the constant and is very much the Deer Clops of this DLC, cause it's likely gonna be the first big bad you'll encounter. He comes towards the end of the second season and he does so at a very inopportune time, which is a nice touch, and in the end, he drops loot that holds importance till the end of your world. Yep, you're gonna need to know how to kill this thing. First order of business, find a swordfish. Don't care how or don't care where. Although looking in deep waters and near wrecks is advised. All I care about is finding the spawner. Do so, murder the majestic creature that lives there, and proceed to mark the area with a backpack so you never have to worry about trying to locate one again. Swordfish respawn every minute or two, and that in and of itself is ridiculous, but they are used to craft the insanely powerful Cutlass Supreme. A single fish with a sword for a schnoz, two gold, and one twig means a weapon that deals 68 damage, has 150 uses, and carries no downsides. That's better than a dark sword, people, but there is more. The cutlass deals an additional 34 damage to the twisty seal for a total of 102 damage per slice. Supreme indeed. Second order of biz. Choose your method. There's two schools of thought here. Fight them on the high seas or duke it out on the land. Both have their benefits and both have their oh dear god why on earth did I choose this way sides of them. But let's start with the battle on the water. Like the Quacken fight, we're gonna need boat repair kits, so go slaughter some stinger having locals to get a handful of those for yourself. Then we'll need an armored boat at the very least, and a decent sail is advised that is gonna help out a little bit. And well, that's about it. Now we just gotta wait for the sucker. Nah, who am I kidding? We need armor and heels, of course. But as for armor, note that you're not actually gonna need it if you're fighting them on the water. But a couple log suits is all you're gonna need regardless anyway, cause honestly, you may not even get hit at all to come the end of all this. As for heals though, anything you already know of and utilize from the base gain is still gonna be available to you. But note that honey poultices will always be easily obtainable, fish sticks should always be plentiful and shipwrecked, and dragon fruit can and will always be farmable. But here are two very easy and very effective shipwrecked recipes to keep in mind. First up, Bisque, a food item that heals for 60 and uses only three limpets and one ice to whip up. Remember that limpets come from picking rocks, so they are readily available and highly renewable. And to get ice, you can refine hail into pieces of the solid water whenever you wish, during or after the hurricane season. Second up, seafood gumbo, a soup that heals for 40 and has fantastic stat regens along the way, mind you, but has a variety of recipes at your disposal. The easiest of which is just but four fish caught within the swampy islands. Easy peasy. So, now that you're ready and have battled the high winds and insane storms of the hurricane season already, it's gonna be seal NATO time. Like Clops, seal will arrive near the end of the season, but always be ready anyways. Your characters are gonna warn you when something is coming too, so pay attention. And if he does come at night, which is highly likely, then I highly suggest that you avoid him as best as you can at all costs till morning. But once the fight is on, it's on. Seal NATO boasts an area of effect attack that usually sucks up the player, mobs, and objects. But on the water, that translates to waves both in and out. For this initial phase, it is best to kind of stay back and do your best to avoid it at all costs. But once it's over, it's time for slicing and dicing. I strongly advise getting but a single hit in as the timings are slim. And even that may not be viable for some. But what we want is to get him back to his twister attack. Now, do not sail away during this time. If you even get there, that is. Because if you're using the Cutlass Supreme and getting more than one hit in, you probably won't. But if you do, stand your ground and then light the sucker up. You have your repair kits and your 102 damage per hit weapon. So a boss with 3000 health is not going to last long. Yes, you're going to get soaked to the bone. And yes, your boat will have seen better days at the end of it. But this is the most efficient way of dealing with this dude while on the water. 
Once the beast is dead, he's going to reveal his true form, a cute and adorable little seal that will still end up murdering for our pleasure anyways. But now, let's talk about fighting this guy on land. A couple things are going to be needed. Finding or creating your own barrier is paramount, as they're going to prevent you from being sucked up via his twister attack. So build a wall like this, find a rock, or use a tree. A lightning rod for the inevitable storm is gonna be a good thing because you yourself do not want to get struck by lightning during this fight, or heck, even after the fight after you've won. And a chimney to provide light without having to worry about the element distinguishing your fires very quickly. Because again, he's probably coming at night. But on land, the fight is quite simple. Just as long as you remain behind your barrier during his tornado sucking ability. Even completely flat walls will actually prevent you from getting sucked up. But note that Seal himself will still be able to pass over them. As for kiting the beast though, if the wind is not fighting you during the storm, a simple 3 hit then dodge pattern is all that it's going to take. But stick to 2 if you aren't quite confident enough. And honestly, that's it. Just repeat that and you'll kill it dead in no time. The biggest thing, when it start to suck in, get behind the wall. That thing deals 250 damage each, so yeah. Loot time. The turbine blades he's gonna drop can be made into an iron wind. An accessory to your boats that increases speeds up to 50%. It lasts for four days and can be forever repaired with gears. This thing makes navigation a breeze for the remainder of your time at sea, so get you one. The magic seal that the adorable seal will drop for you when either killed or spared is used to create the Howling Conch, along with the Obsidian and a Purple Gem. You're also going to need to be near the Obsidian Workbench atop the Volcano too, so this thing is not going to come easy in many ways. But the Conch allows for strong winds to be called forth at any time, and they last for about a half a day. So I guess it kind of helps navigation a little bit, but in the end, it just ain't worth it in my mind. Because even with the sail stick, another potential recipe with the magic seal, strong winds do not equal an iron wind and a walking cane combo, and especially when coffee comes into play. In short though, the sailing stick puts the strong winds at your back at all times, no matter which way you turn. And that can be kind of good, but again, it's just not worth it. Oh, by the by, killing the seal on land after his twister form instantly raises your naughtiness to 50, which means a guaranteed Krampus spawn, which means the potential for Krampus sacks on top of all the other loot we just discussed, which ultimately means that you could potentially have your storage and navigation problems solved in a single night. My goodness, man. This fight has it all. But there you have it everyone, officially our first shipwreck specific guide centered on the content it brings to the table. Seal NATO is a unique fight with highly sought after loot, so I do hope some of you out there have learned something today so that you can go ahead and put an end to his spinny antics. Thanks for watching folks, well wishes to all, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye!